Hi everybody, welcome to Dynamo Sword Channel. I'm David, and today on Dynamo Sword Channel, I will be presenting episode two of the Do It Yourself customization series. This episode is going to be on sword cleaning and polishing. Now, if any of you already own functional high carbon steel swords, you might be aware that it can be kind of a chore to keep them in good working condition and as well as keep the, uh, the rust away and things like that. So in this video, what we're going to be looking at is uh, different materials, tools, and cleaning solutions to keep our swords polished and clean, as well as my steps and methods to get it done and also have a consistency to where you can keep your swords looking like new for years to come. So in the beginning, I will grab the tools and, and things and we'll uh, show those and so you know what to get and what options there are to use. And then I'll get the sword and we will start cleaning and polishing. So if this uh, video is something that you're definitely interested in and you're also interested in more future do-it-yourself customizations, be sure to leave comments and let me know what you guys would like to learn and I will do my best to get them on video and, and put them in as episodes of this new series. All right, well, stay tuned and we'll get to the sword polishing and cleaning. All right, welcome back. So here I have my basic um, cleaning solutions and, and materials to, uh, to keep my swords polished and clean. So the first thing we'll look at is oil. Now, since it's metal, oil is very good at cleaning and protecting metal, especially swords. So what I prefer to use is what is known as three-in-one oil. It is a uh, synthetic mineral-based oil, and it does really good uh, protecting from humidity, uh, weathering, uh, you know, water, rust, things like that. It also has a very good longevity, so you won't have to worry about it evaporating off your blade or, um, you know, if you keep a decent coat on it, you know, it will, uh, it'll last for a really long time. So definitely, uh, first one is you're going to want to get some good oil. And again, three in one is very highly recommended. My second is because I'm more of a metal polish user. I know some sword enthusiasts aren't, they prefer the oil and the oil is fine if you like to oil your blades regularly and things. Me personally, um, one con to oil is, is the smell and just the general consistency of oil it gets on your fingers and, and things. So I tend to like to use metal polish, especially for the swords that I display. Um, and even the swords that I use because it is really good at cleaning up, especially after cutting sessions, for example, with water bottles and things where you're directly getting your swords in contact with moisture. So my personal favorite um, metal polish is flints. Now, there are various others like mothers and things, and it's really just kind of buyer's choice. I really like flints because um, it is eco-safe, non-toxic, which is a bonus. It doesn't have a strong smell or, or have really a, 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 a lot of mess when it comes to cleanup. So this is definitely a really good one and it does a very excellent job. So again, um, there are plenty of other uh, metal polishes to try, but if you want my personal recommendation, I definitely say go with flips and it can usually be found in any hardware or a department store um, in the cleaning aisle or or with the polishes and things like that in the hardware stores. So on to the more simpler things. Um, wet dry sandpaper is also really good, especially for metal. It's made for metal. It's good for polishing out when you have some heavy rust or if you want to get a polish a little right, you have some scuffing or something like that or maybe you scratched or, or, or kind of nicked your blade. Um, wet dry paper is really good at polishing, honing for sharpening, things like that. 
Um, now, depending on the polish of your sword, you might not want to go too low in grit. Um, like most sandpapers, um, the lower the number, the heavier the grit, so the more um, abrasion you're going to get. So normally with most like satin finish swords and things like that, I like to stick around, you know, 500 to 1,000 um, because it kind of matches that. And if you do get any surface rust or heavy rust, that 500, and then you just kind of work your way up until you get your polish a little more even. So right here I have two pieces. I have uh, the 500 grit here, and then I have a piece of 1,000 grit. And normally how you use the thing, you can use it dry, but it's usually recommended to put a little water or oil on the paper or on the metal uh, parts that you're polishing and then kind of evenly blend it and go with the grain so you're not counter polishing and, and you know ruining that finish. The other two are quite simple and probably something you have lying around everywhere. Um, you know, cloth towels, lint-free, uh, I like to use the lint-free uh, style just because they're nice and polished, they get a good even. Um, and then of course, some paper towels or something to apply your oil or your polish. I mean, you can use a towel to um, apply polish, but just so you're not really staining and, and having to wash your, your uh, um, towels a whole lot, might as well use some disposable papers. Since I'm here at the bar, as I usually do my videos, I did get some uh, cocktail napkins, which will work just fine, just like any other paper towel or napkin or any other paper towel type products. So, so yeah, and that's basically all you need. Um, you know, there is a little technique to it, and we'll get to that next after I get the sword. But primarily, if you have, you know, this right here, you have plenty to keep your swords in good shape regularly polishing and cleaning you know after cutting sessions or use or um, just generally throughout the months um, you know usually I like to try to keep my swords polished at least once a month maybe two times a month and then always 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 make sure to give a good oiling or polishing uh, with the metal polish to keep your swords nice and clean after any cutting session or use especially if there's any moisture involved so, all right, so now that we have our um, materials and cleaning solutions, next I'll go grab the sword and uh, we'll start polishing. All right, welcome back. So let's get to polishing. And the sword that I brought along to polish is my windless Heroes War Sword, which is a Lowland Claymore based off of the Bruce family Claymore. Now, if you've seen the video of me um, cutting with it, I have a few of them on the channel as well as my re-review that I did in video. Uh, you can see that this is a pretty big sword and I kind of wanted to do a big sword because I wanted to show that no job's too big and no job's too small and, you know, from the big swords to the little swords, they all need the same uh, TLC. Or, and so yeah, so we'll do with this one. So um, first I'm just gonna remove the uh, uh, removable dimmy scabbard that if you watch the review video I spoke of that I you know, built myself. And then we're gonna go on to polishing. Now normally I like to start with the blade and I will just kind of examine the blade for any spotting or anything, anything that might need um, you know, the, uh, the oil in the paper before I get to, um, you know, the polish. Now the polish is nice, but the polish will not re remove, uh, surface, uh, darkened spots or, um, surface rust. So you'll definitely want to kind of go over your sword, make sure there's not any spotting or anything and, or discoloration and go over with the paper. So what you'll want to do is, is just kind of, and you can use scissors or a knife. I kind of just kind of peel it as I go and just get you a nice, good, you know, decent shaped rectangle or, you know, good spot that will kind of take over the surface of the blade. And like I said, you can put oil on the blade or you can put oil on the paper. 
I tend to like to just do a little oil on the paper. It tends to blend a little bit easier on the on the blade because you have it on the um, on the paper. So we'll just do a little ample amount. You know, you don't need too much. You don't need to really oversaturate it, and you can rub a little, bit, rub it in a little with your finger if you want to get a more even blend. But as you can see, it's just a nice light coat of oil. It doesn't have to be heavy or anything. And like I said, what we want to do is, is go with the grain. So I'll kind of start at the top. And again, this is the thousand grit. Um, again, with the kind of the windless semi-gloss mirror polish. Uh, you don't want to go too low in grit or you'll just have scratches all over your blade. I've had made that mistake before when I wasn't aware, you know, in my early days of things. So definitely start high see if the abrasion you know if it's not being too abrasive and if the um, staining and the, and the surface rust is coming off and if it's not then move down in grit so let's just give it a nice little quick polish and if i have any spotting or anything i'll just kind of focus on those but i really just want to kind of keep my strokes even I don't want to like kind of like you know go sideways sorry making sound effects but I don't want to go back and forth especially if I'm going up and down because I want to keep that polish even and I don't want to kind of counter polish and make my blade look any uh, you know ugly or anything or add any unnecessary scratching or surface marks especially if you like to display your swords or if you plan on, you know, reselling them in the future or anything, um, you know, kind of think about it, how you would want your sword if you were buying it secondhand or something and try to keep it in shape. You know, I know not everything's perfect and, you know, just give a description of as is if you do have some, you know, heavy staining or anything, but yeah, we just kind of, go over it like this and like I said this blade is long and I said this sword is about as almost as tall as me 64 inches in total it has a total blade length of 48 inches so this one is definitely more of a chore to um, polish uh, compared to something shorter like let's say a gladius or a uh, type 14 arming sword so we're just going to kind of keep going back and forth and kind of get those. If you see some surface um, polish that some little dark spots or something, just kind of give them a little extra rub. If you don't see them coming off, then yeah, you might want to upgrade to the um, thing. Also, if it's sharp, be sure to watch for edges, guys. Um, it's really easy for this paper to, uh, to get cut through an edge or when you're going in that up and down motion to slice your hand, which nobody wants. And, and you know, even oopses can be very deep and, and potentially dangerous. So make sure you're going nice and slow and even and being aware of the edge. So after we have kind of wiped it down with the, uh, we'll just kind of, remove and you can see just how much dirt and, and a lot of that's just the oil and, and the sandpaper the dark but you'll start seeing a lot of you know and as you polish it you'll start seeing the blade getting a lot cleaner now this is as far as you really need to go if you're an oiler but if you do like to polish then you'll want to get this oil off and then you'll want to move on to um, your polish now the polish is really easy to apply all you gotta do is, is give it a good shake, kinda mix it up a little bit. And then, as opposed to the oil, which I like to apply to the uh, sandpaper, I tend to like to give a nice little grip down the length of the blade so I know I have a decent amount for the whole surface of the blade. You don't want your polish kinda drying up. You can put it on the towel, but at the same time, you're worried about not getting a really even blend, so we'll just kinda Give a little bit and I'll give you a view of what I did. Now, I did end up globbing a little too much on the top, but as you can see right here with the remaining um, 
length of the blade. That's about all you need. So I did do a little excess, but that's all right. Um, you know, unless you're running low on your bottle and you got plenty of swords to wall uh, to clean up. But yeah, we're just gonna kind of do the same thing we kind of did with the um, with the sandpaper and oil, and we're just going to sort of kind of apply this fully on the blade. So the whole blade gets a nice good coat. Think of it like kind of like you're painting the blade and it'll dry a little bit. The green will go away and that's when you know you're kind of rubbing it in the metal and it's getting a good polish and finish. Again, guys, watch those edges. And again, if you see any more like spotting or anything after you've given it a good polish, because will, they will be a lot easier to see because the rest of the blade will be clean. Um, definitely go back over it and get those spots out. Now, this is where I normally take my towel. And so what I do is, is I just kind of, you just want to rub all that excess off and kind of just polish it out so it's nice. There's no excess. You don't want to leave any excess polish on it. The polish is not good to leave on the blade. It can stain and dry and cake. So you definitely want to take your towel and just kind of do the old wax on, wax off, I guess you could say. So once we have the blade nice and the, the polish rubbed off, you'll see that it'll be nice, shiny and clean. Be sure to be aware of your fingerprints. You know, if you want to wear gloves or something, you can. But just kind of you, or you can use the towel to just kind of blend in. But as you can see, even a big guy like this, not too hard to polish. You just kind of got to have the room and the breadth. Again, not a very heavy sword for its size. Um, about uh, right around right around six pounds. It's tall though, so be careful for ceilings. But yeah, so, you know, not bad for a sword. Again, as far as I know, some of you might be wondering, it's flex. Again, it is flexible. It is a great sword. So, and you know, there's not much distal taper to it, but yeah, pretty nice functional $300 great sword. So now we'll move on to the uh, pommel and um, guard. So the pommel and guard, as you can maybe see with this one, I'll try to get a view of it. But this pommel kind of had a rough month. I don't know if it's just because it's going from winter to spring. I don't know if uh, just maybe I had a little too much moisture in the room that I keep it in, but I'm getting some pretty decent surface rust on that pommel. The guard's nice and clean, but for some reason the pommel just I don't know, maybe uh, you know I touched it and didn't realize and kind of left my fingerprints on it. But again, this is a pretty easy fix. So what we can do is, is we can take our oil, because we still have it oiled, and just kind of give it a good rub. Nice and firm, since we have rust for sure, we want to get that rust off. And again, this is one of those times where it's the rust is not coming off, which you can always test by kind of rubbing, but it looks like, oh yeah, it is. So I don't need to downgrade it to the 500 or 800 or anything. The thousand's doing its job. You can kind of see the rust residuing on the paper because the paper's doing its job and, and the abrasion's getting it off. So you just want to kind of, again, go with the, uh, polish so we're not making a counter polish which can kind of mess it up especially if you're on a little grit and pommels can be tedious because they all come in different shapes and sizes this one's what's known as an onion bloom pommel which is kind of a similar to a to a type t pommel as far as other um, medieval european stores go or the scent stopper pommel so they usually have some oblong 
shapes and edges, so it can be a little tedious to get around those nooks and crannies. But once you get it nice and once you kind of get a feel for it with the blade, kind of scrub the peens because nobody wants rusty peens either. If it is rusty, and then we just kind of give it a good, nice polish. And we take our uh, towel, give it a good wipe down. And as you can see, that rust is gone. And that's how easy it is to remove rust. I know rust can be scary to you guys, especially you new guys that aren't familiar with it, but just because it's a little rusty doesn't mean it can't be polished off. So then what we're going to do is, is we're going to go to polish and since my guard is nice and clean, I'm not seeing any spotting or anything, we're just going to take the thing, uh, take the polish and now normally because the uh, guards and pommels are smaller, what I'll do is, is this is when I'll apply it on a towel because if you kind of drip it around it can make a mess and and you know and i don't know how your surface is you know i got this nice big table which i don't know if you guys can see from the angle but it's actually a beer pong table that we have here at the bar so a lot of fun people have a lot of fun with that if you're familiar with the beer pong game but so we're just going to kind of take our guard give it a good rub down especially the uh Incusion here, which can kind of stick out and get a little rust, especially um, you know, especially if, if your sword has an incusion like this and it's uh, it's scabbarded, um, it can uh, it can be kind of a rust magnet because the fingers go there and um, you know the scabbard goes there, the leather and things, so that can cause some. Um, some issue so just give it a nice good polish all the corners and angles up and down all around so you know you got a good amount of polish on it and then we'll take our towel I'll keep it off if you got any excess on the blade that's all right just polish her off give that a good scrub and polish and flip her over or him, however you pronoun your swords. And then, all right, same thing with the palm. We'll apply a little extra since we use the majority of it on the uh, guard. It is a big guard, 13 inches long, so definitely a big guard. Now we're just going to kind of on. Now the other nice thing about flits is that if you do get any on your leather, it's not going to bug it. Um, you know, it just wipes right off. It doesn't stain it. It doesn't um, ruin the finish or anything as far as getting it um, getting it wrong. And so there we go. Nice polished. Lowland Claymore. Now, of course, I didn't do one side of the blade, but like I said, I keep this guy pretty clean. I keep the blade housed um, so it's not exposed. And then, like I said, the only thing that's really exposed is the garden pommel. That pommel did get a little sassy with me this month. That's why I wanted to do this sword and show you some surface rust that can be polished out. So as you can see, nice and clean just like new, nothing to worry about. And then again, we have, for example, a demi scabbard. Just slide her back on like so. And there we have it. Back to a functional, nice and clean if you have it on the wall or something. So yeah, real easy to do, just takes a few minutes 
and you know of course it takes longer if you got a lot of swords so but yeah if you do this every you know once or twice a month if you have a lot of humidity in your environment or if you use your swords frequently definitely you know give them a good cleaning after but honestly cleaning your swords is not hard it's not difficult if you have the right stuff and you have the time and it's honestly in my opinion very therapeutic i enjoy just kind of sitting listen to some music or um you know based on you know if you like you know, obviously if you like medieval swords and, and japanese swords put on a uh you know sword themed movie like a samurai movie or braveheart or something and uh just sit there and relax and enjoy your swords while you know watching the film and yeah should be real easy you know it's any chore can be fun if you make it fun. So, all right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode two of the do-it-yourself customization series regarding polishing swords. Now, I know this was more focused on European swords. If you really have questions about Japanese swords, and I know there's Japanese cleaning kits and stuff like that, but honestly, carbon steel is carbon steel. The polish, the oil, papers, things like that. They work the same for any type of sword. Doesn't matter if it's European swords, um, you know, Middle Eastern swords, Japanese swords, Chinese swords, polishing oil is polishing oil. Um, but definitely if you guys do want a uh, another video uh, where I could show you maybe how to do a traditional Japanese polish with the cleaning kit, show you how to use those guys and some of the swords come with them, as well as just show you hey, this works just as well for Japanese swords. Uh, shoot me some comments in the uh, comment section and I will definitely make that uh, a future episode. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.